I want to go back to Mark chapter 5, to the story that Pastor Sam uh, started with. Mark chapter 5, be, beginning with verse 21. It says, Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. Behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. When he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. Now that's what he believed. He approached Jesus and he said, Look, if you will come and lay your hands on her, she will be healed and she will live. We all agree with that, right? So he comes to Jesus. He's heard about Jesus. He's the ruler of the, of the local synagogue there. He said, listen, come and, lay, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. That means pressing in upon him. So Jairus is happy. He said, if you come and lay hands on her, she'll be healed. She will live. And so Jesus says, okay, let's go. So he's on his way to Jairus' house. Things are looking good. But this is where we get into the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. And we know the story from a couple weeks ago. I don't want to preach the whole the story because you heard that. 12 years, she spent all that she had. She didn't get better. She grew worse. She suffered through many physicians. And of course, uh, Pastor Sam's message was don't give up, don't quit. Don't lose your hope and uh, persevere. And... Uh, like I said, I don't want to re-preach that message. It was a great message. The CD is available. Get the CD. Amen. And, and so, but see, the beginning of the story, Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house because she's at the point of death. If you're at the point of death, that means you're really, really sick. There's an urgency here. And so he's on his way to his house and this woman messes up the whole thing. She delays. She comes. She touches Jesus. And, and, and he stops. And he's talking with her. And everything's good. She gets her miracle. And I'm sure Jairus is going, okay, come on, Lord. We got to go to my house. My daughter is sick. I'm glad she got healed. Now, lady, go away. Leave us alone. I've got business. My daughter is sick. And so he's anxious to get to his house. Now, verse 34, and he's, and he said to this woman, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Be healed of your affliction. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher anymore? This delay. It's great that this woman got her miracle. But remember, Jairus said, Look, she's at the point of death. I mean... A point is not big. It's a point. In other words, close. This is serious. There's a sense of urgency. We don't have time. Woman, you've suffered 12 years. You can last another day. You know, this has been going on for you. You know, leave them alone. Come on. I, we, we've got a sense of urgency here. Why trouble the teacher any further? She's already dead. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. As soon as Jesus heard the message that came, he interrupted. He interrupted any further conversation. He interrupted the guy that was speaking, and he interrupted Jairus before he could say anything. This morning, I came to bring an interruption into your life. I want to interrupt some things that are coming to your head. I want to interrupt some lies. I want to interrupt some fears that, that maybe you're dealing with a situation and you think it's too late. It's too hard. It's too big. I don't know what to do. And what happens is fears are beginning to grow. Jesus said, do not be afraid. As soon as Jairus heard what the messenger said, listen, your daughter's dead. Why trouble him anymore? Why, why, why bother him anymore? It's basically too late. And Jesus interrupts and says, do not fear. Yeah, but don't you, no, do not fear. 
only believe. And you'll notice when Jesus said, do not fear, only believe, Jairus didn't say anything. Let me encourage you, when fear is growing in your head, challenging the faith that's in your heart, turn off your mouth. To do not fear, only believe. Only believe. Well, believe what? Go back to where you started, Jairus. Lord, I want you to come and lay hands on her that she will be healed and she will live. And so Jesus was on his way. I believe that any time Jesus is on his way in a situation in your life, he knows the situation. I don't believe God is surprised by anything. I don't think something happened and God goes, wow, I wasn't expecting that. No, the Bible says that Jesus is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Before there was ever rebellion, before there was ever sin, there was already an answer. In fact, if you look in your Bible, the last book of the Bible is not called Concordance or Dictionary or Maps. It's called Revelation. <laughs> And when you read the book of Revelation, you know what you have? The story of the end. In other words, God already knows the end. He knows how things are going to turn out. He has a plan. He has a purpose. There are no surprises. So I believe that as Jesus was on his way, yes, there was a delay. Yes, the woman with the issue of blood Took some time. I don't know how much time she took, but right now Jairus is having to make a decision. First of all, not to be angry at that stupid woman. Why did she messed everything up? And she's healed, and now he's bitter. She's alive, his daughter's dead. Jesus said, Don't be afraid. Only believe. I want to encourage you this morning that when fear begins to come to your head, when fear begins to overwhelm you and tries to steal what, where you were originally going in one direction and you had an expectation, you really believed things were going to change, but something happened and came in and has just taken all the wind out of your sails. It's, taken, it's almost taken your breath away. I have a word for you this morning. Don't fear. Don't fear. Believe. But you have to know what you believe. See, faith in your heart has to be bigger than the doubts in your head. You have to know what you believe when it comes to the money in your wallet. You have to know what you believe concerning your finances. You have to know what you believe concerning your physical body. You have to know what you believe when God, what God says concerning your future. Everybody should know Jeremiah 29, 11. It should just be a verse that rolls automatically off of our lips. I know the thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts that are good and not evil to give you a hope and a future. See, faith is not knowing that God has good thoughts for you. Faith is you knowing what those thoughts are. What are God's thoughts towards you? What is God's word that is alive in your heart that when a fear tries to come to your head, you have something that rises up from your heart to answer it? That's why we're here today. That's why we gather. That's why you read your Bible. That's why we have care groups. Because in life we get hit. We, we, get, we get ambushed. We, we have no idea of certain things that are going to happen. Listen, I'm sitting in a coffee shop Tuesday. No, is it Wednesday? We went down Tuesday. We came back Wednesday. When did it? When did the storm hit Tacloban? Thursday? Thursday. Okay. Wednesday. Okay, hey, Friday. Does anybody know what today is? <laughs> Sunday. Okay, good. Wednesday. I was in Tacloban. They shut all the flights down Thursday. So Wednesday, I'm in Tacloban at a new hotel small hotel that they had uh, people had taken an old house and turned it into like a small hotel I think only 15 rooms and and I'm sitting there with Pastor Ram and some of the other pastors from 
from Samar and Leti, and we're sitting there having coffee, sitting in these nice big chairs, and I'm thinking, wow, look at this nice, quaint little hotel, beautiful hotel, and we're sitting there having coffee, talking, fellowshipping, laughing, joking. No idea in a little over 24 hours that hotel would be destroyed. No idea that in a little over 24 hours, Tacloban will suffer the worst storm in the history of the city. Had no idea what was coming. We're sitting there laughing and enjoying our fellowship as pastors from the different area, just encouraging one another and praying for one another, sitting there relaxing, drinking coffee and, and partaking of these incredibly wonderful appetizers. Very comfortable chairs, air-conditioned room, newly decorated, beautiful place. And now it's totally gone. No idea what the storm that was coming would be so bad. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen next week. I don't know what's going to happen in your life next month. But I do know that as we build truth into our hearts, as we lay a foundation and we build our lives upon a rock that when storms come, that are going to be worse than, than we expected. Nobody had any idea how bad the storm was going to be. If they would have known, maybe they would have, I mean, there's been typhoons come through some aren't late. You know the Philippines is the number one nation in the world for typhoons. It is. The Philippines gets hit by, hit by more typhoons than any other country in the world. This storm that hit last week is the strongest storm recorded in recorded history. No joke. Nobody knew how devastating it. Nobody would, knew how bad it was going to be. In life, we don't know how bad things are going to be. There, there are things that are coming and we don't know how bad they are. That's why we build a faith into our hearts so when things come, we have a strength, we have a stability so we do not get overwhelmed with fear, so we do not give up, so we do not quit. That when fear comes in and tries to consume us and say it's too late, it's too hard, it's too bad, it's too deep, it's too whatever, there is a voice that wants to rise up and say, don't fear, don't fear, continue to believe. Continue to believe. Continue to believe. Continue to believe. He said, but yeah, but it looks impossible. When you believe, when you trust in, when you rely in, you have confidence in, that's, that's faith. The authority and the power of his words coming into our life gives us the ability to overcome fear. And Jesus is encouraging this father's faith in what seems to be a hopeless situation. In Mark chapter 9, verse 17, there's another story of a man who brought his father to the disciples. Really, he wanted to bring his son to Jesus. His son is being tormented by an evil spirit. Jesus was not there, so the disciples tried to cast the spirit out, and they could not. They failed. When Jesus comes down from the Mount of Transfiguration, he comes down and he sees the crowd there, and he questions, says, what's going on here? And the father says, Lord, I brought my son who's being tormented by an evil spirit to your disciples to cast the spirit out, but they could not. They failed. So if you can do anything, have mercy on us. He said, if you can. When you say, if you can, that means you have doubt. Anytime you have the word if, that means you're not sure. Correct? You know, in Mark chapter 8, a leper came to Jesus, and he said, Lord, if you are willing, I know you can heal me. The leper did not doubt Jesus' ability. He said, if you are willing, I know you can. He said, I know you can, I know you have the ability, I just don't know if you want to. See, faith is not based on the ability of God. Faith is based on 
knowing that not only God is able, but he is willing. Jesus told the leper, I am willing. He touched him, said, be healed. This father said, Lord, if you can do anything. That means, I was hoping that you could, but I'm not so sure now. I mean, these guys, these are your, these are your guys. These are your pastors. These are your disciples. And they just, they let me down. They gave it their best shot. They prayed, they tried, and my son is no different. So I don't know if you can, but if you can, please. And Jesus said, if you can. He said, if you can believe. See, it's not about if God can do anything. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. He did not say small things are possible. He said what? He said all things are possible. Now, if you look up the word all in the Greek, you know what it means? All. It means anything. It means everything. You mean all things are possible if I believe? Yes. You see, that's why fear comes. Fear is a lie that comes to your mind to try to convince you that what you see and what you feel is more real than what you began to believe. And our physical senses try to tell us what's real. But the Bible says, while well, we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. The things which we see are temporary. They are subject to change. The things which we do not see, they are eternal. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible. The father said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Can you have belief and unbelief? Yes, you can. You can believe in your heart when you still have some doubts coming against your head. Just because you have faith doesn't mean that every past memory of a disappointment or somebody lets you down doesn't mean that that's all gone but when you step out in faith and you continue to trust God it means you act upon this and not act upon this live out of your heart not out of your head that means even if you don't know how God is going to do it because I believe God wants to do some things that you have no idea how he's going to do it do not limit God to your head. God is bigger than your head. Remember Jairus? Don't trouble the master anymore. She's already dead. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Yeah, but she's... But how? I mean, but... but. How many times have we wanted to believe something and we say, yeah, God, but... Some of us have big buts. It's always, yes, God, yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. You have to get your butt out of the way. And just say, yes, no buts. See, when you put your butt in there, you're saying, yeah, I, I, I want to believe that, but I don't understand it. I, I don't see it. It doesn't make sense. I mean, how, what I feel seems more real than what I believe. What I'm seeing with my eyes seems more real. What I've heard with my ears, I have something in here, but what I'm seeing out here and what other people are telling me seems to be more real. And that's where fear comes in, and that's why his word has to be more valuable than the word of man. And that's why you have to build it into your heart because it's not always easy. When you look in your wallet and you don't see gold dust, you just see dust. When, when physically you don't feel well and yet you're, you're, you're standing and, and you're trusting God that he is the healer of your body, but physically your body aches, but you say, I believe that by the stripes of Jesus I am healed. When you're trusting God for direction, but you're thinking, man, I don't know what the next decision I'm going to make, and your, your word says, my sheep hear my voice and the voice of a stranger that they will not follow. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Let me encourage you in something. When you don't know what to do, stop speaking out your doubts. 
If you don't know what to do, quit saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Why don't you quote a verse? As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. My sheep hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. I thank you that the candle of man, the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inwardmost parts of his being. Lord, I thank you that Isaiah chapter 11 says that the, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and counsel. I have that spirit, so I have wisdom and knowledge and understanding and counsel. Ephesians chapter 1, Paul is praying uh, that the eyes of my understanding would be enlightened, that I would make, know the hope of your calling, that I would see and know. Colossians says, Paul prayed that I would be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And you see, you're sitting out there going, yeah, but you know all that because you're the pastor. No, I know all that because I'm a believer. See, because I have to deal with the same challenges you deal with. I get no benefits from being a pastor. I have to deal with temptation. I have to deal with strife. I have to deal with with challenges, I have to deal with sickness and disease. I have to deal with attacks against my body, Shadi's body. I have to deal with the same things that you do, and I get no special privilege as a pastor. I deal with everything as a Christian and as a believer. To listen to the whole message and to know more about New Life and its ministries, visit www.newlife.ph.